The success of a nation depends greatly on the godliness of its leaders. And this is what the Lord is showing us as we read through Second Chronicles. The focus is on the kings of Judah, and the majority of those trusted in the Lord. Solomon had great success because he sought wisdom from God, and God granted it to him. He also granted him great wealth and power, and there was peace in his days. But when Rehoboam took over the throne, he didn't realise he needed to depend on God, and the kingdom split under him because of Solomon's sin because his wives had turned his heart away from the Lord. Rehoboam, though, learned his lesson and maintained the spiritual life of the nation, although Jeroboam continued to harass him. After 17 years of reigning, he died, and his son Abijah became king. Abijah reigned for three years. Jeroboam thought now's the opportunity to take Judah. But Abijah said, You are fighting against God because God has given the kingdom to the family of David by an everlasting covenant. Jeroboam took no notice and attacked, outnumbering Judah two to one. But when the children of Israel called out to the Lord and the priests sounded the trumpet in the name of the Lord, the Lord routed the mighty army of Israel and 500,000 of them were killed. Abijah rested with his fathers and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa his son reigned in his place. In his days the land was quiet for ten years. Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God, for he removed the altars of the foreign gods and the high places, and broke down the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden images. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers, and to observe the law and the commandment. He also removed the high places and the incense altars from all the cities of Judah, and the kingdom was quiet under him. And he built fortified cities in Judah, for the land had rest. He had no war in those years, because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore he said to Judah, Let us build these cities and make walls around them, and towers, gates and bars, while the land is yet before us, because we have sought the Lord our God, We have sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. And Asa had an army of three hundred thousand from Judah, who carried shields and spears, and from Benjamin two hundred and eighty thousand men, who carried shields and drew bows. All these were mighty men of valour. Then Zerah the Ethiopian came up against them, with an army of a million men and three hundred chariots, and he came to Marashah. So Asa went out against him, and they set the troops in battle array in the valley of Zephathah at Marashah. And Asa cried out to the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on you, and on your name we go against this multitude, O Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. So the Lord struck the Ethiopians before Asa and Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and his people who were with him pursued them to Gerar. So the Ethiopians were overthrown, and they could not recover, for they were broken before the Lord and his army, and they carried away very much spoil. Then they defeated all the cities around Gerar, for the fear of the Lord came upon them, and they plundered all the cities, for there was exceedingly much spoil in them. They also attacked the livestock enclosures, and carried off sheep and camels in abundance, and returned to Jerusalem. Now the Spirit of God came upon Azariah the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time Israel has been without the true God, without a teaching priest, and without law. 
But when in their trouble they turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found by them. And in those times there was no peace to the one who went out, nor to the one who came in. But great turmoil was on all the inhabitants of the lands. So a nation was destroyed by nation and city by city, for God troubled them with every adversity. But you be strong, and do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and removed the abominable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities which he had taken in the mountains of Ephraim and restored the altar of the Lord that was before the vestibule of the Lord. Then he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and those who dwelt with them from Ephraim, Manasseh and Simeon. For they came over to him in great numbers from Israel when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So they gathered together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa, and they offered to the Lord at that time seven hundred bulls and seven thousand sheep from the spoil they had brought. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers, with all their heart and with all their soul. And whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel was to be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. Then they took an oath before the Lord with a loud voice, with shouting and trumpets and ram's horns. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought with all their soul, and he was found by them, and the Lord gave them rest all around. Asa also removed Maka, the mother of Asa the king, from being queen mother, because she had made an obscene image of Asherah. And Asa cut down her obscene image, then crushed and burned it by the brook Kidron. But the high places were not removed from Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was loyal all his days. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me. We've read chapters 14 and 15 of Second Chronicles concerning Asa. He reigned for 40 years and took deliberate action to turn the hearts of the people to the Lord. For each generation needs to make that decision themselves. And the declaration is, the Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. And that led Asa to deliberately set about getting rid of the pagan images, the idols, on all the high hills and focus the people on worshipping God truly and renewing the covenant, getting the whole nation together as previous kings had done to offer sacrifices to the Lord and to commit themselves. And the outcome of this was that there was peace for most of Asa's reign. He began by removing the high places of worship and the incense altars, so that the people would come up to Jerusalem to worship, and not just worship according to their own ideas on their own local hill. The kingdom was strong because Benjamin and Judah and many men of Simeon, the tribe of Simeon also had territory in that southern area, and they were all joined together. And he was tested earlier on in the tenth year of his reign, when the Ethiopians came up against more than a million men against the half million that Asa had. Asa didn't just fight against them, but he called on the Lord. Lord, it's nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on you, and in your name we go against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. And so the New Testament urges us to do all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we will have success in our lives. The Lord struck the Ethiopians and because of that battle they were able to exploit the wealth of the cities around Gerar. 